Well, hey gang, here's Pastor Stefan with your next installation of the Send Snapshot. If you're new to Manoa Community Church, about once a month or so, we reach out to some of our missionaries to get an update on the field of what they're doing, because as you give to Manoa Community Church, a significant portion of your giving goes to support missionaries all over the world. We have a focus in the greater Philadelphia area here, and also in unreached people groups in the 1040 window. And so the missions committee splits them between them. Most of the missionaries you've heard from so far are people who are serving in unreached people groups. But today I'm pleased to introduce to you Alexis Barnhart, and she's one of our missionaries in our own backyard. Alexis and I met a couple years ago. I came to Manoa about three years ago, and shortly thereafter, her uh, director, Justin, introduced me to her because she's serving at Bryn Mawr and Haverford Colleges, which are some of the closest uh, colleges to our local church here in Havertown. And so we hit it off right away. I got to go preach at one of her schools, and we'll tell you more about that in this. But she's been working uh, for the last three years full time um, on these campuses. And she's also recently married to her wonderful husband and best friend, Matt, um, who you probably met at church on Sunday as they worship with us together. But I just want Alexis, go ahead, say hello to one another, and then just um, tell us how you got involved in ministry. The ministry she serves with is called InterVarsity. Go ahead, Alexis. Hi, everyone. So I'm Alexis. Um, yeah, and I got involved with InterVarsity Christian Fellowship when I was a student at undergrad at Susquehanna University. Um, I was not yet a Christian, I was curious. And so I was looking for a place to ask my questions. Um, and InterVarsity was, the home that I found with like really awesome small group leaders who welcomed me as I was, helped let me ask my questions. And I really began this journey of getting to know Christ. And by the end of my first year, I was baptized. And then I was invited onto leadership myself. Um, and that was a really critical time for me because my own staff worker, Ryan, um, he was so lovely in helping me to learn skills to invite my friends to a Bible study um, equip me with skills to be able to disciple other people um, as I myself was growing. And so through that experience, I really realized college is a really critical time that we're asking questions of like, who am I and what am I going to do? Um, and with my own journey, I want to continue to be a part of that. And so that's why I decided to join staff and come on with InterVarsity. Wow, that's wonderful. Yeah. So you got saved through InterVarsity, you came on to staff with InterVarsity, and then you were appointed to Bryn Mawr and Haverford, right? And things yeah. were starting to kick off. And then obviously COVID happened. So maybe you could give us a picture of what ministry looks like um, right now, because I think schools are reopening before that. And maybe what your time looked like during the COVID season as well. Yeah, um, I'll start chronologically because that's how my brain works. But um, so before COVID, um, Ministry looked like me really getting involved closely with the student leaders. Um, and I would work with them to help them lead large group spaces where we have speakers come and worship and pray and share the gospel. Um, we have small groups, so small group leaders lead Bible studies so people can grow in their love for God and each other. Um, and then we do outreach events, which we really love to do. Like we do one called Text a Toasty. Um, and so we make toasty sandwiches, grilled cheese sandwiches, people text in questions about faith and Christianity, and we bring them the sandwich and then people ask, we answer their questions and have a conversation with them. Um, that was one of my favorite pre-COVID things that we would do. <laughs> um, so yeah. have an example of the, maybe the best from that outreach where somebody texted you with a question and you delivered the sandwich. I'd love to hear your story. Yeah. Um, well, I, what's, something I really love is seeing a student leader take a risk to do something like this um, because they'll come and they'll be like, all right, I'm going to try this, but they're really nervous. Um, and so I get to be with them, to pray with them, to talk them through that. Um, and my favorite stories are when students go out in pairs, answer a question, and somebody was like, the person that asked the question was, um, had a lot of anxiety or depression or was in a really hard place. And them going help that person receive peace, receive love, and then that person gets involved. Like, <laughs> and that is really beautiful. Um, and then the students that were nervous come back and be like, "This was great. It's not as scary as I thought it was." And my friends really needed me to come and share my faith with them, and that was really important and like critical in their experience. Awesome. Yeah, I um, 
I was very involved with Campus Crusade for Christ, a similar ministry at Drexel University. So I can very much relate to that and a lot of fun stories of just going out, reaching out to the dorms, the fraternities, um, different parties, those sort of things where we're just helping people move in. So I, I love what you're doing. I love your heart for that. And I did get to, before COVID, go visit Bryn Mawr with you and uh, some of the folks from our church and be one of the guest speakers. So first, thank you for the privilege. I love to preach uh, in the schools and to um, saw a couple girls make a profession of faith that night, which is awesome. So you're on two campuses. You're at Bryn Mawr and Haverford. They're right up the street. They're both next to each other. Uh, just tell us a little bit about how those schools are similar, maybe how they're yeah. different, what ministry looks like on those campuses. Yeah, the schools definitely have a lot in similar. The relationship between the two is called the BICO. Um, Bryn Mawr is a women's college, and historically, Haverford was the male's college. It's now a co-ed college. Um, but students take classes on both campuses. Student organizations operate in both places. So in that way, it allows me to have natural overlap between the fellowships, which is really great. Um, and on these smaller universities where there's not as many students, it's nice for them to see other people, other students that are following Christ and have small groups and that they're doing similar things on their campuses. Um, some of the differences for sure, um, Haverford's culture is just a little bit quieter. <laughs> um, they're a little bit more reserved and studious and they're really great and lovely. And Bryn Mawr is a little bit more um, vibrant and colorful and um, full of life in that way. And so it's definitely an interesting thing to bring them both together. And they, I like doing that um, because they have a lot of life in that way. Mm, that's great. So obviously COVID probably made a lot of things go virtual. Can you just tell us briefly what that virtual season looked like and now what, what your world looks like post? I know COVID is not really post, but that you're allowed back on. Uh, yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah, so when campuses shut down in March 2020, um, we shifted to Zoom and we put our small group Bible studies online. Um, and what I noticed happened was we all of a sudden, like people who knew each other in person were becoming more vulnerable and we were becoming a space to really share our burdens together and pray for each other in a way that hadn't been there before. Um, and that was really beautiful to see. Um, and then when the school year started and we weren't allowed on campus, some students were there, um, but still taking classes online, um, but we had to do everything online. We tried to be creative and um, social distance walks when allowed and handing out welcome gifts, um, kind of just like putting them at the door, knocking and leaving and that sort of a thing, um, but still trying to make people feel welcomed as we could. Um, and people, there was excitement, students did get involved. Um, unfortunately, by the end, there's just a lot of burnout, um, which makes a lot of sense. There's a lot happening. There's a lot people are carrying. Um, people were really tired of being online. And so that was definitely a hurdle for us. Um, but what's been really exciting is seeing those people that we did connect with and go the extra mile to get that welcome gift to, with or check in with them, texting and on social media again and again. They're now connecting with us again. Um, even though it felt like there was a loss for a little bit. Great. So both of them are reopened now and schools kicked into full gear. So um, are you able to do all that you were doing before COVID hit or is it a modified form? What's a typical week look like for you between these two schools and, and what yeah. you your student leaders? Yeah, it feels incredibly refreshing <laughs> how we're able to be back together again. Um, the one caveat that's different is food. We're not able to like do text to toasty right now. Um, or in some, there's a lot of restrictions on if we can have food at our gatherings, which is a hindrance in some ways, but in a lot of ways, it's just really great for us to be together. Um, so a typical week, um, there's three small groups that happen throughout the campus, throughout the week at both campuses. Um, and so I'll go and visit those, help the student leaders lead them, talk them through what they're doing and debriefing and praying with them. Um, I we meet with the student leaders weekly um, to pray and train them and equip them. Um, and then I, myself and the other student leaders too, we have lots of one-on-ones to have discipleship conversations, get to know new students, um, check in on them, pray with them, all those really good things. Um, so those are kind of some of the things that I do that are part of my weekly rhythms. 
Very cool. Very cool. So a lot of our ministries that we support are geographically out of out of reach. You know, I talked about the 1040 window and whatnot, but really we are neighbors, as I shared before. I've preached at one of your clubs. And um, you know, as I think we at Manoa are growing fast. We have a lot of young families with little kids now. We're starting to uh, reach across all generations. And yet I would still say that college kids go to high school, they graduate, they leave. And mm -hmm. that's still probably a missing demographic in many churches, including Manoa right now. Now that you're doing full-time college ministry, what would you advise to us as one of your partners of being a hospitable church to college students? Like what helps bring college students into churches, make them feel comfortable, safe, you know, all those types of things. Um, yeah, what would you recommend? Yeah, I think especially with this generation, um, students really want to be known. Um, I think we all have that desire too, but I see the real desire for if there is one or two people that feel really safe and that family welcomes them into their home for a meal or um, exchanges numbers and things like that and gets to know the person on a level of um, what's your home like, what's your family like, what are your struggles at school, how can I be caring for you? Um, that kind of care can be really important for students and especially international students. We have a big amount of international students in our fellowship um, and for them they don't get to see their families during the year and all that sort of thing. So really having like family away from family um, is a uh, really important and can be really helpful. Great. Um, when those students stay home for the holidays, when everybody else leaves, are you do you need families to host them, or or what kind of said more open ended? What kind of needs would you have from a church like Manoa in partnership yeah. with that? As our folks who are watching this video, what could they either be praying for you for, just saying pray for this for us, or if you had a chance to recruit, because you do right now, like what do you need uh, from the nearby churches, whether it's volunteers, whether it's resources, whether it's, a, like you said, a house for people, what are the things beyond the, the checks that we're sending, hallelujah, God uses mm -hmm. that, you need that, but what are, what are those tangible things that uh, someone watching this video might say, oh, I could do that, and they'd reach out to me, and I could connect them to you? Yeah, yeah, we, I mean, so the students that are on break, um, and aren't able to go home, it is nice if they can have a home that they can go to for a meal or to celebrate um, Thanksgiving or Christmas or Easter along with, um, and that can be a real blessing to students. Um, other ways to get involved would be to help provide rides to students to our retreats and things that happen um, throughout each semester we have one. Um, and really, we I would just really love prayer that, um, we are reaching, keep continuously reaching all the corners of campus and um, making sure that we are a hospitable space for people from every place and that are coming on onto, onto our campuses. Great. Well, we'll definitely pray with you. I'll pray with you on the Zoom today. And then prayer warriors at Manoa, you're, you're hearing your marching orders. Uh, <laughs> so, and Again, church, I just want to encourage you, if the Holy Spirit stirs you with some of those, um, just reach out to me or somebody on the missions committee, and um, we can connect you to Alexis if we think that you'd be a good fit for some of those. And uh, it's her ministry. I mean, it's God's ministry, but through her, so she can say yes or no. <laughs> but uh, we'll do our best to connect the needs and people and gifts and resources uh, in a way that she can succeed most effectively and have the support of the church. You know, I asked her earlier, I, I shared, I went to Drexel and I drove 30 minutes to go to church. My experience is college students travel in herds. Like we moved together, we set up carpools together and uh, distance wasn't a problem. In fact, Alexis shared earlier, most of the students are going to church in King of Prussia in Philadelphia, um, two churches she listed, very good churches. So um, I pray that we become a hospitable place as well, not to pull them out of those churches, but just be one more option really close by because we really are neighbors uh, to help out. So any other things you'd like to share with us, Alexis? Uh, one thing I forgot to ask you is just maybe a little bit about what is InterVarsity? Um, you got saved in InterVarsity. It's clearly a college or collegiate ministry, but could you give us any sense of whether the history of it, scope and scale of it, how many schools are in this region uh, serving with you, those types of things? 
Yeah, for sure. University Christian Fellowship, it's the oldest um, college ministry in the United States. Um, it started in Great Britain, and that's how the name came about. It's kind of a British way to say between colleges. I know that can cause confusion for people. Um, no, we don't do sports. There are athletes involved. but um, And we're on, I think it's about 750 campuses in the U.S. Um, with about like 1,200 chapters amongst those ch campuses. Um, and then so Bryn Mawr and Haverford are part of the Mid-Atlantic region of university. So that's this Eastern half of Pennsylvania, Maryland, DC area. Um, and we're on a bunch of campuses in that area as well. Um, and so we do things together with retreats and conferences and um, missions trips and those types of things. Um, yeah, and so it's a multi-ethnic interdenominational college ministry um, on campuses across the US. That's great, that's great. Well, it's, it's such a pleasure to partner with you and just know that if you need anything from us, um, a phone call away, the missions committee is as well, will function as a liaison between you and the congregation, but we are praying for you. We will pray for you. And Manoa, um, Alexis did reach out to me and say, do you have anybody that if they were interested could come to Manoa with carpools? And we picked a few names that we thought you might live around there, but if that's you and you think you would wanna do that, please reach out to the church office and we'd love to facilitate that as well. Um, so we long to be a church that reaches students for Christ and helps you do that and helps you succeed at that. And then also a place where college students can connect to a local church during college and learn how to live out their faith um, beyond college as well. You know, as I did Campus Crusade, and maybe you can speak to this as well, Alexis, one of the things that I realized is that students that got saved into Crusade never learned out how to live out their faith in the context of a local church. And we weren't really doing them a favor if we didn't connect them to a church before graduation, because they sort of had two options, uh, come on staff or graduate their Christian experience away, you know? And so I, I think it's so critical what you're doing to reach students for Christ, but also so critical that the church comes alongside of you. And even though we're right around the corner, it's a world away, right? Like Havertown and Haverford College are, are two different universes. And so whatever way we can bridge the gap between you and this ministry, um, we wanna do that with you. So any thoughts that you have as it relates to the importance of the local church and college ministry and college students or any final thoughts before I pray for you? Yeah, I agree with what you're saying. Um, it's really critical that students get involved in a local church and break the college bubble and also have people of all age demographics involved in their time and walk with Christ. Um, and then can transition into life after college, which is a gap that we've been really trying to press into me and my coworkers and colleges in this area um, with senior programming and helping them. How do I find a church after college and get plugged into community and um, translate what has been an experience in college, which is different than life after. <laughs> um, so I definitely agree that is really important and I'm grateful to Manoa and everyone who's been praying and so coming alongside in support of the ministry. It's wonderful. Um, great. Well, it's a privilege to partner with you and Matt. Her husband helps from her on campus as well. And remember, I think he was playing the guitar at the time I visited. So uh, you got the Aquila Priscilla thing going strong. Uh, the team ministry, that's awesome. And we thank God for our partnership with you and look forward to doing ministry together in many ways, as many ways possible to be a support to you. Um, so you shared a few ways to pray for you. Is it anything else you wanna throw into that before I pray on the video for you? Yeah, I think what I've said is great um, and that I'm continually just myself grounded in Christ. Um, I wanna be a leader that is pouring out of my relationship with God. Awesome, great, let's pray. Father God, I thank you so much for Alexis. I thank you for calling her to this great ministry. Thank you for Bryn Mawr. I thank you for Haverford. I thank you for the fruit of the gospel, that it bears fruit and grows, Lord, first in our lives and that you saved Alexis. And then the very ministry that reached her is now the ministry she's going through. And Lord, we thank you for our ability to partner with her. Lord, we pray that more students would come to Christ like her and give their lives, whether in full-time ministry or just plugging into the local church and living 
for Christ day in and day out, whatever way, Lord, that more lost souls would come to Jesus through her impacts, Lord. I, I pray, Lord, that you would, would keep her grounded in Christ, Lord, that we find our identity first and who we are in Christ, not what we do for Christ. And so I pray that over her. Lord, I thank you that as things reopen, there's more opportunity uh, to meet face to face with students. So I pray for sweet fellowship on campus. I pray for the food restrictions to be lifted because I know how effective that is in building community as well as drawing in new people. So I pray that that would be lifted soon, Lord. And Lord, I pray for the the guest speakers who come in, the small groups and the small group leaders all the time that Alexis is spending mentoring and discipling leaders, Lord, that you would uh, multiply her efforts and multiply the fruit of the gospel through that. And we do pray for students that they would get connected, Lord, connected to local churches all over this region to learn to live out their faith after graduation, Lord, and pray that Manoa could be part of that solution as well, Lord. And I, I just ask, Lord, that you would keep these students grounded deeply in your word and Lord in, a, in an arena where um, it's very much the battle of ideas, a place where they're going to learn and do great things, but also think deeply about the world that you've created. Lord, I pray that the, the students would come out of college and out of university learning to love you more deeply with their heart, soul, mind, and strength. And so uh, I just pray that it would be part of the fruit of the gospel going forth through Alexis and through InterVarsity Christian Fellowship. And I pray for rides that every student that wants a ride could find one for the conferences, for the retreats, um, for the funds and fundraising needed for all of these initiatives. Lord, we pray that you would provide above and beyond what we could ask or think, Lord. So we thank you for gospel partners, both internationally and right here in greater Philadelphia that we get to work with, Lord, and pray that the fruit of the gospel would, would be strong because of our relationship with Alexis and because of our relationship with InterVarsity, Lord. So I pray for fullness of your spirit, pouring out of your grace upon her, and that everyone she comes into contact on that campus would see Christ alive in her, and that would be attractive in the aroma of Christ through her and the other student leaders. For your glory, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And thank you so much for your time. You get the last word to say goodbye. Thank you, everyone. It was a pleasure getting to introduce myself and look forward to be seeing you all soon.